Good morning, friends. It's been a while. I've been sick. Um, last week I had a horrible cold, and then this week, I don't know. I don't know if I had a stomach flu or what, so I missed work last night. Um, still really queasy, so I don't know if I'm going to eat any of this food, but the boys, Mason and his friend Anthony, are here. I want to send them back with something to eat. So I'm going to do a one pot broasted roasted chicken that way I can put it in there and then I can go lay down on the couch so um let me get started here so I've got my La Croce my favorite girl so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add into here um this is just simple do what any kind of vegetables that you want so for the boys I'm going to do carrots and I'm going to do extras that way if they want to take some home with them so this is just a bag of those uh, baby carrots. Put that in the bottom of there. So I have my oven uh, set at 425 and it's heated up. Now I don't always have potatoes in the house because we don't eat a lot of potatoes, but I did have these in the freezer and they're baby bakers from the Swans. So I did have those with just whole, little whole potatoes. So somehow the bottom of this bag got ripped. So I'm just going to put that in. So I'm just going to pour some of these. They're froze, which isn't a big deal because... Yeah, I'm just gonna add. Um, they're frozen, which isn't a big deal because this is going to cook for quite a while. So um, maybe it'll help them keep their shape. So there we have it. There we go. We've got the potatoes and the carrots. I've got some chunky onion. I like to keep it chunked up so that um, it doesn't cook away. I love cooked onion in a roast like this. Okay, so there's that. I'm gonna move this aside so you can see what I'm doing. Set that there for a moment. I have this big, beautiful leek, and she gorgeous, that I just got from Miss Fit Market. So I'm gonna show you how to cut it up. A leek is in the onion family. It has a milder taste, so we're just going to cut that bulb off, and then we're going to cut it to here. Okay. I just love it. So gorgeous. I'm going to look up and see what I can do with these. I'm sure there's something I can do with those, so I'm not going to throw those away. But right now, I'm just going to do the bulb here. So I think I'm just going to cut it like this, and then I'll cut it down the middle like that try new things buy some produce listen as many things as on the internet right now that you can look up you can look up leeks um, leek and potato soup is very popular um, put these leeks in anything look them up don't be afraid to try new things okay so they're kind of dirty so what I'm going to do is I, I've got a bowl of water here so I just want to clean them just like that just gonna look them See that? So that's that bulb of leek. Got that in there. I said they're kind of dirty. This I ordered from Misfit Market. You can buy leeks anywhere. All right, so we got those. I've got those washed. I'll set my little cutting board to the side here. The boys are home. Mason and Anthony, his friend Anthony, came home and um, I just gave him a haircut. Both of their hair was really long. So, they'll be going back with a haircut. Um, okay, so I'm going to take these leeks out now. Listen, guys, I am so behind on my Christmas stuff. Like, I don't have any Christmas decorations out. I actually still have fall stuff out. And I was hoping today, today I would find my Christmas decor. And then tomorrow I start on it because it's usually a two-step process for me. Usually one day I decorate the house and then one day I decorate the trees because I keep a little old-fashioned tree in my dining room and then our family tree in the living room. So I'm not feeling up to that. So it may be Christmas Eve. I'll be putting up the Christmas tree. Oh, well, it is what it is, right? Okay, so i got the leeks in there. i got my onions, my potatoes, and my carrots. I'm going to add some olive oil. Do you have a little olive oil sprayer? I love this for a little easy to portion control and then I'm going to add some little S SPG okay there we go and we're going to 
going to stir this all up. Give it a nice good stir. I'm going to kind of make a ditch in the middle so my chicken will fit in there hopefully so I can get that lid on. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to set this off to the side and we're going to do the chicken now. This is a whole chicken that I got from Misfit Market. Um, I didn't spatchcock it. I'm just going to leave it whole. Spatchcocking needs to take that bone out and, and flatten it out. But I'm just going to leave it whole like this. I did wash this um, and then pat it dry. Paper towel. Actually, I'm going to pat it some more. A tip I want you to know, anytime I buy meat like this in a package, even if it's ground beef, um, chicken, anything from the grocery that's in a bag, I will put it in another bag, whether a grocery bag or a Ziploc bag, and put it in my fridge. That way, if it leaks, it can't leak out into your fridge. And the thing from being professional, you know, I have a, um, there's certain rules and regulations that you have to follow when you own a restaurant. One of those is, which we don't keep for all meat at the shop, but all real meats need to be kept on the lowest shelf in your refrigerator. And that's a good rule for home. That way if it does leak, it's not leaking into your potato salad. So anyway, always double bag your meats. That way if they leak, which sometimes they do, you are safe. I've got this chicken. This is a, she's just shy of over four pounds. So, um, oh my goodness, my daughter, when she come home from the hospital, weighed five pounds. She weighed much more than this chicken. So anyway, I, I rinsed it, patted her dry, and now inside of here I have one stick of butter that I softened, and in that I have fresh thyme, fresh rosemary, and I have some Aleppo pepper and some SPG. Now, before I get my hands all nasty, I'm gonna take a sprig of thyme, No graceful way to do that folks I'm going to do some rosemary I'm just gonna throw it out there so that way I'm not touching everything okay we're gonna shove that in there also okay move that aside so now we're going to take and there's no I guess you could use a baster brush but I'm not going to some things you just have to get dirty and do yourself. This is one of those jobs, in my opinion, where you need to get dirty. You can wear gloves. Not going to. Okay, so we're going to put that butter around. Now, you're going to give her a nice massage. Speaking of massage, I need to book myself what? I hope you're taking care of yourself this time of year because listen, it, it's a lot. The hustle and bustle of Christmas and all, you feel like you have to do so many things. I want to tell you a story about someone. I won't name his name, Brock. Um, one time I asked him, I said, hey Brock, do you want to do, and I don't remember what it was. It wasn't anything significant. And he said, no. And I said, why? And he said, because I don't want to. And I was like, is that an option? Because you don't want to? And, you know, through the years, as a mom and, and a business owner, I feel like I should do everything. Like, you know, take on more than really what I needed to. And then I started taking on the philosophy of Brock Ratcliffe and saying, no, I don't want to. I mean, outside of taking care of my children and my home and my business, all the extra things. If I really didn't want to do it, I just said no. And it changed my life, especially when Brock got sick and, and surgery and things. And, you know, um, you just, you just kind of tell yourself it's not important. So I hope you are taking care of yourself. Don't feel like, you know, I used to think I had to do everything to be a good mom, a good employer, a good wife. And then it's like, no. That's not really important to my kids. It was my issues, not anybody else's. So tell yourself you don't have to be and do everything.
okay? Okay, so there we go. Let me wash my hands. Look at that. Isn't she lovely? She's covered in butter. Let me wash my hands really quick. There was probably, I could have used, uh, you know, some kind of uh, something to spread that on with, but I just think sometimes the best way is with your God's tools. These are God's tools, your hands. Okay. I like to always, when I'm working with raw chicken, I, you know, have a dish towel, but I always like to dry my hands with paper towels so you don't contaminate anything. Okay, so here we go. We've got this beautiful chicken. Now I'm going to hit it with my favorite. I'm going to hit it with some paprika. And you could use any, you know, any seasonings you want. It's, it's your chicken. Whatever flavors your family likes. There's so many combinations you can use on this. Okay, here we go. Good and covered with my favorite. The Aleppo pepper, like I said, this has become like one of our absolute favorites. It adds a little heat without being too spicy. Just add that on there. Be a good addition to that skin. I'm going to bring my girl back over and then I'm going to take my juicy hen here lift her up look at that all right let me show you here looky there look at that I'm gonna take my spoon and kind of I'm going to get this down in here a little bit further because I want to make sure my lid's going to fit. I'm going to give it a test here and see. Yes, she's going to fit. All right. This is why you need a big, big La Croce for big meals like this. Okay, so like I said, I have the oven set on 425. You're going to roast 20 minutes per pound. She's four, just a little over four pounds, so we're going to go 80 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 50 minutes with the lid on and then 30 minutes with the lid off to get that skin nice and golden brown. I'm going to add a little bit of water. Probably a half a cup or so of water. Now, the, of course, the chicken will extract juices when it cooks, but um, I like to do that to keep my pan safe. Go. And there we go. One pot roasted chicken. We've got the potatoes, the carrots, the onions, and we have that the rosemary and thyme up in the kabute. And then we've got our seasoning on top with the seasoned butter. I'm going to put the lid on. Make sure we're good. Nice tight lid. I'm going to put this in the oven. Oh, that's heavy. Oh, my goodness gracious. That was heavy. Okay, I'm going to set the timer for 50 minutes. I always set a timer because I'm a multitasker and sometimes I get sidetracked and I lose uh, time. So always set a timer to be safe. All right. Next up, I'm going to make to go with that chicken a, um, a cheddar biscuit, which this is just so simple. And it's just because Mason loves it. And I haven't made them for a while. So. Why not? Why not spoil my boys when they're home? Nothing wrong with that. You know, um, he had a package of chicken he brought home from his apartment in the fridge. And I went ahead and grilled it up this morning on my grill pan for him and fixed him some cauliflower rice to take back with him. And 
He didn't ask me to do it, but I don't mind doing it for him because I didn't want his chicken to go bad. But I'm very proud of my kids. They they live in their own apartments. They cook for themselves. They buy their own groceries. They buy, pay their own rent. So when they're home, I don't mind spoiling them a little bit. I mean, that's the, they're spoiled. Well, let's just face it, they were spoiled regardless, but uh, I don't mind spoiling them when mommy, did, when they come home and see their mommy. Um, it's kind of been about a weekend for them to be home because I haven't felt good, but hopefully this meal will kind of make it up for them. Okay, so in here, just a quick cheddar biscuit, kind of like what you get at Red Lobster. They're super, they're super easy. I keep Bisquick on hand. Let me show you. And this is just uh, the Bob and Carl's brand. I like to keep this on hand for things like this. Um, so what it is, listen, I'm sorry, I never measure anything, so I'm trying to be better. So in here I have two and three quarter cups of, two and three quarter cups of that uh, baking mix. And then what it is, is Brock told me one time it was cheating. It's not cheating, it's just because it has everything in it. It just takes a step out of mixing everything together. So I don't worry about him saying I'm cheating. I don't say him in here making no biscuits, do you? Okay, so three, we've got two, two and three quarter cups of the, bis, the baking mix. I've got uh, three quarter cups of milk. I don't really know. I never, like I said, I never measure anything when I make biscuits. It always is by look, by um, how it looks. So I'm gonna stir this around. And I may have to add more, I don't know. But that's what I thought I would grab first, this three quarters cup. Now, if I was rolling this out or whatever, this would be fine. It's a little too stiff for me. So I'll let you see this. To me, that's a little stiff. So probably what we would have needed was a full cup of milk. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit more milk. You know, and I always cook, I always keep 2% milk. We're not milk drinkers, but the dogs have their cereal, as you know. So, I mean, don't be afraid to cook with 2% milk. It, it's gonna be fine. I mean, some recipes require full fat milk, but for something like this, it's no big deal. You don't have to take every take it so seriously. You should have fun in the kitchen. I do. Not everybody has fun in the kitchen, and some people hate it. I can't imagine hating it, but we all have our things that we like to do. I will say that I'm done Christmas shopping. Um, I think I have to get like two more gift cards, and that's it. So I'm glad that's out of the way. I don't have to worry about that. Okay, so to this, I've got some garlic, granulated garlic powder. It's gonna go right in on the with the biscuits. This is personal preference. If you like a lot of garlic, add a lot of garlic. If you do not, don't add a lot. But you wanna taste it, so I'm gonna stir that up. Sorry, I'm going slow. I am a mess. I'm still having trouble with my right arm. It's like a tennis elbow type situation. I, I'm just like, this year has been really rough on everybody and me physically. I'm just like falling apart. So anyway, okay, so there's our mixture. Now we're gonna add some cheddar cheese. Once again, personal preference. I would say probably half a cup to three quarters of a cup and that. You know, growing up, I don't know that any of my family used measured, followed recipes very often. Everything was done with your eyeball and the feel and the texture. So sometimes I, it's hard for me when I do these for you guys because then I feel bad, but I've been trying to do better about having my measurements down. Okay, so there we go, that's it. So what I'm gonna do now, it's that quick, it's that simple, it's just a quick biscuit. It goes good with stew, it goes with chicken. So probably what I will do with that tomorrow, what's left over, if the boys don't take it home, I will make Brock and I a nice um, chicken soup. He's talked about going fishing tomorrow, so that way I can just put it on the top of the stove, keep it hot, so whenever he comes home, we can just have us a nice 
bowl of soup and that might be good for me because I'm not sure if I can eat today or not. I haven't tried yet. Okay, so here we go. Just got my little baking sheet here, a parchment paper. And I'm just gonna do a drop biscuit and I'm just gonna, just gonna drop these right down on my parchment paper. I'm gonna bake these at 400. So what I'm gonna do is when that timer goes off and I take the lid off for the last 30 minutes on the chicken, I will put my biscuits in. And that way everything should be done at the same time. Okay, I'm just gonna drop these right by tablespoon. Okay, so I will stop so I can show you what else I do. I take, I keep this parquet butter spray on hand and what I like to do is I hit those with a little bit of that butter spray and then I will hit the tops with a little bit of garlic salt right on top there. Oh, maybe if I can get that, there it comes out. Okay, that's it. And these will go in the oven 400 degrees, bake them till they're done. I'm gonna finish this off and um, I'll hopefully send you a picture of what that chicken, roasted chicken looks like. Okay guys, I'm gonna finish this up. I'm gonna do my dishes and then I'm gonna go lounge and um, hope for the best with my stomach today. All right guys, I've missed you. Hope you enjoyed this recipe. Have a good day. Oh, I gotta get my clicker on. And bye. 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 Maybe. I gotta come around. All right guys. Bye.